Okay, let's get started drawing this Nepenthes pitcher plant. First, I'll be kind of looking at the length and the width, the overall shape on my paper. And so I'm just going to work from the outside in, kind of like you would a sculpture, starting it outside. So I'm just sh showing where the uh, basic leaf is, where the pitcher is, and the lid is. And I'm not putting any pressure on my pencil. I'm drawing as lightly as possible, what I call tickling the paper as lightly as I can. And I'm just going back and forth, back and forth, uh, very, very quickly. Although this uh, is sped up uh, for your convenience. So uh, anyway, just looking at all the shapes, all the negative shapes, which is the uh, white spaces there between um, the green shapes of the leaf and I'm just uh, not being afraid to correct myself making things a little bit narrower or wider where they need to be and so now that I've blocked in the basic shape I'm going to start going a little bit darker working on that leaf first and I'm working on that mid rib of the leaf that becomes that that uh, tendril and I'm going to work on the uh, back of the leaf and then showing the uh, underside of the leaf. There we go. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Leaves are quite variable in nature, so it doesn't have to be exactly like this, this uh, drawing of mine. Um, I'm drawing here from a painting I made of the Nepenthes by Calcarata that I saw uh, growing wild in Borneo. So as you can see, I'm drawing a little bit firmer as I'm a little bit more confident of the line that I want to keep. And then continuing down onto that tendril, and just making some really, really light uh, erasing marks here and there. So now I'm looking at the, the tendril that's uh, on top of the picture area. Uh, it goes in a little spiral there, and then it comes down to the base of, of what they call the pitcher, the hollow pitcher that's actually capturing insects. And it's also helpful at this point to look at the negative shapes, like inside that little uh, curly cue, loop-de-loop, -loop, as you think of it there, those negative shapes inside. And noticing what part goes under and what part goes over. That part of the stem is hollow and there's a very special relationship with an ant that lives nowhere else in the world but inside that hollow tendril. So now I'm looking at the hollow picture itself, the, the length and width, and also the negative shapes I'm noticing between it and the leaf. And just kind of ground truthing, basically always, always noticing where I'm drawing. Uh, looking back and forth very frequently between my subject and my drawing. And if I need to do some erasing, that's fine. Drawing the front of the picture that opens up into that area where the insects fall in. And oh, then noticing here that very point there, that point and that rib there is the very end of the leaf, like in a normal like houseplant leaf, that would be the very tip of the leaf, that little spine there that I'm drawing. So I'm going to just show that uh, little ridge there to some extent. And then we're looking at the lid, uh, the lid and that negative shape between the leaf and the lid. Just indicating the top of the lid, that uh, lid is thought to help keep too much water from going into the, the, the juices of the, um, of the pitcher to, to keep it from getting too diluted since there's digestive enzymes in some of those pitchers. And then the underside of the lid is where the uh, nectar is produced that uh, attracts the, the, the prey. And then we're doing the very special fangs in this species. This is called the fanged pitcher plant because of those cobra-like fangs. And I'm noticing also the negative shapes uh, there, the white shapes. And then that ridge, I'm adding these ridges that are along the mouth 
also known as the peristome of the carnivorous plant there. Some species have more distinct ridges than others, but I'm just kind of indicating those uh, very lightly and firming up those lines a bit. And now just kind of looking everywhere to see if I've got the major shapes. I'm going to just start uh, firming up or darkening the lines, pressing a little bit harder than I did before. Just going around and using my, my left hand uh, just to kind of point and help keep track of where I'm at and making sure that I am looking at my subject and not at my drawing the whole time. Because we do want to draw from observation and not from memory or imagination. And there we have it.